So, um, my name is Mike Gifford, I'm the president of Open Concept Consulting, and I'm going to be talking about uh, personalization and building an accessible website. So, um, so first of all, how many people have to, to, to deal with accessibility on a semi-regular basis in their, their work life? A couple people. Um, and has anyone had to deal with personalization? Okay, so a couple people have had to deal with personalization. Um, so, I, I think that the, the um, the main thing, although we're getting into this in more detail, but uh, uh, but but first of all, you, you open concepts is another Drupal Drupal shop. Um, I'm one of the accessibility maintainers. Um, me and Andrew McPherson are the the two people who have been pushing the Drupal eight uh, accessibility uh, work for for the last few years, um, and uh, we're really excited to have people here to talk more about about sort of the next stage of, of accessibility. So does anyone know what this this represents? This might be more relevant to people from the states. Um, this is a uh, an indication of uh, the Jim, or this is a cartoon illustrating the Jim Crow laws, which is uh, the whole idea of separate but equal. That you can create create an experience. That, you know, when when the civil rights came in, and there was an effort to try and and say, well, you can't discriminate against black people. There was a decision to go off and, and to say, well, let, let's go off and, and just give. Give uh, you know the, the, the black people and the, the, the people who are Latin American the the, the um, similar access, just not the same as the white access. And and this is um, this is something that that has been repeated in the web in a lot of ways because people have there, there used to be an effort to try to go have a, a a full featured beautiful website for, for people who are, are sighted and use and have and don't have have any accessibility challenges. And then you have a text-only version for, for those people who have accessibility challenges. And it was very much like this. It was supposed to be separate and equal, but it never was. It was never the same type of experience. And it was something that, that is, is a, a very poor example to go off of, to, to follow. So if, if anyone ever comes to you with, with a, um, an effort to talk about personalization, and they say, well, let's just create an accessible version for, for those people. Let's not try and make the main site accessible, because that's too expensive and too difficult. We'll just create an accessible version. Just, just keep in mind that this, we've done this in history before, and it doesn't end well, because there's never enough resources. It's never equal. It's always a, an inferior experience and something that gets, gets less attention. Um, so, um, so after trying to go off and, and deal with the, the, the web accessibility, um, uh, like that, that approach to web accessibility, there was an effort to try and, and create the, the, the web, the web, the WK, um, the web content accessibility guidelines, um, which which started in, in 1998 with WK 1.0. Uh, in 2008, they released the WK 1.0. Uh, sorry, uh, 2008 was WK 2.0. Uh, and then then we've uh, just this last year we had the WK 2.1 was released. Um, but the, the the goal behind this initiative by the, 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 the Web Accessibility Initiative of the World, World Wide Web Consortium was to, to take, to, to, to build a single platform, a single set of rules that you could use to go off and make your website accessible. Let's go off and create that one website to rule them all. Let's find a way to go off and to, to, to unify things into to a, single, a single experience. It's a great goal. And the the, uh, the the platform, the the concepts, the principles behind the the WK platform are are great. We want to make sure that it's it's perceivable. We want to make sure it's understandable. We want to make sure it's um, operable and robust. So poor, perceivable, understandable. So perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Um, those are great principles, and and they're they're really a challenge to implement. Um, but. But in uh, how many people are familiar with, with WK? Laura, you are, of course. So you know, excellent. So there's there's challenges with some elements of, of WK. It's not. Um, it's a, there's there's, there's uh, I think a hundred and some different different items as, as part of WK, and there's a lot of questions in terms of how do you how do you try and make sure that you're you're following these principles for all of the different kinds of disabilities out there because. You know, there's people who are, you know, the, the first one when people think about it, uh, disabilities, they think about the, the blind users, that extreme use case. Well, how would somebody who's blind navigate through such a visual medium? And, you know, you can do that. The, the, uh, the, you know, using a screen reader, you can definitely navigate through and, and manage a well-structured uh, content management system like Drupal. Um, but but it's, it's, it's not just that user case. There's people who are low vision, there's people who are dyslexic, there are people who have cognitive impairments, there are people who are 
are uh, dealing with, with, with mobility challenges. There's people who have multiple disabilities as well. Um, there are people who, are, who have a cerebral palsy and are also blind. There's the, the blind deaf population. Um, there's people who are seniors who have different experiences and different challenges in, you know, interacting with the web than, than people who are younger. And just, just our, our brains, you know, this is, this is news for, for, uh, for, for all of the people under 30. Um, as we grow older, our brains change. And we're not the same as we were. You do not think, you do not observe the world in this exact same way as you did when you were 20. So, you know, some things are going to be more of a challenge, um, whether that's learning a complex navigation or whether it's, it's seeing that tint of blue, whatever it is, there's, there's, a, there's going to be things that are, are going to be a challenge for you. And, and we keep forgetting this part of, of because our, our culture isn't really geared for it, but, but aging is a, a huge part of, of um, you know, as we grow older, we lose abilities until, you know, eventually, if we grow old enough, you know, we'll have lost a whole bunch of abilities that we had when we were younger. Um, so it's not something that's part of our culture. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not as simple as that. This is a, um, a slide from uh, the, the, the um, 18F, sorry, not the 18F, the GDS, the Government Digital Services Offices in, in London. And uh, they have an empathy wall set up in, in there to try and encourage their staff to try and, and think about how different people perceive the web. So um, they've got glasses you can put on to sort of illustrate sort of different, different disabilities, visual disabilities that people can deal with. Each one of these laptops is set up with a, a different persona in it. So you log in with one, and it's got uh, an a, a extra long font size. You've got another one, and there's, there's a, a black and white high contrast. Um, there's, it's personalized to try and help other people understand what are some of the challenges that you might run into when you're navigating the web. So, so that's a, a, a really example, a great example of that, but, but there, are, there are places where, where these disabilities conflict with each other. And we can't necessarily take a, a simple example of, of um, like, one of them is, is, uh, is, is, is people who are dyslexic generally read better if they have low contrast versus somebody who is, is low vision often needs high contrast. But how people read may actually be different. You, I might be, be, it might be easier for, for me to read with blue and yellow, which would give other people headaches. And so how do you find that happy medium that satisfies everyone? Um, the, the BBC uh, was doing some groundbreaking work in this um, now a decade ago. Uh, they had a, created a, a site called BBC My Way, which, which allowed, like, coax coax people through the process of, of trying to learn how to go off and, and customize your own browser to help help users understand how to get the best out of the BBC. Um, and you know, again, it coaxed people to say, "I can't see very well. I'm blind. I can't hear. I find words difficult." Um, it had a widget in the top right-hand corner, so you can make it smaller or larger. You could go and, and change the colors on it. There's all kinds of good stuff that they had built into this um, because they, they understood that they couldn't make a single BBC website that satisfied the needs of um, all 56 million people in the UK. It was, a, it was a bigger challenge to come up with than they could. So they needed to help users customize their content. Um, I. Uh, how many, how many folks here are, are Apple users? And how many of you use dark mode? A couple people use dark mode. Why do you use dark mode? Anyone? <coughs> it's beautiful. OK. Anyone else any reasons why you use dark mode? Less, less screen in your eyes. Less screen in your eyes, so, so you, can, you can focus on the screen longer without having that glare sort of burn into your, your uh, position. Um, so Apple introduced this a while ago, um, and uh, I think on their, it looks like an old iPhone, but um, it's now on, on, on at least their phones and their, their, their laptops, and it's, it's something that is, it's a, um, it's, a great, um, it's a great idea that allows you to go up and say, what do I need to do to personalize it for my, per, for, for, for my needs? What are my, what are my preferences? And that can get passed along to the browser, and so you can, you know, by using um, a very simple um, CSS media query, you can go off and set up you know, how you want to go off and, and you know, what your preference is. And the, the, your, 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 the, the user, you've got your, your, your computer set to dark mode, 
um, can tell your the browser, which tells the computer to go off and to to display your CSS media queries in a different way. So you can customize it for people who want it dark or people who want it light. So I think this is Dree's website, and uh, he was, was definitely advocating for this and, and explaining how how he's customized his website to go off and work with with dark mode. And there's other people who've done that as well. Uh, Gearling Guy has a blog post about this as well, and and it's it's something that that can can really help people who are, are just have a preference. Like it doesn't even necessarily be for matter for a disability, but if you want to have a consistent user experience and you're jumping around between a whole bunch of different sites, the sites that respect your preferences are going to be ones you're going to want to spend more time on because it's, it's, there's less distraction, there's less, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's more consistent and a more consistent user experience as you're flipping through the web. So I've got a, another one coming up here, but I'm putting up some warnings so that people are... are uh, is, it, is anyone here uh, suffer from, uh, visu from VIMS? Or visually induced motion sickness? Vertigo? Has anyone heard about this? So this is something that, that a lot of people just miss, but it's, it's you know, if, if, you're, if you're somebody that suffers from, from VIMS, um, you can have, yeah, dis dis dispressed appetite, fatigue, dizziness, nausea, Vomiting, and why? Because we have these parallax integrations that we put into our devices. Um, this became more uh, popular in when when the uh, uh, the iPhone started adding the, the CS animations to that. Then we started having all these people who were getting sick because of the animations that were added to their iPhones. And and this is something that that you know, there aren't that many people that are that are affected by VIMS. But you never want to make your users sick. I mean, this is, I mean, it's better than actually causing them to go off and, and, and have a, a convulsive, um, you know, epi, uh, like if, you're, if you have epilepsy and you put a flashing screen on them, that, that's, that's, that's worse because that, that could be a, you know, that could actually kill somebody. But, but this is, is, you know, a close second because, you know, with VIMS, you actually make people sick. Um, it's, it's kind of sad with, with, uh, with Drupal in that we, we don't really have a way to to, um, to test for this. So we actually talked to Charles, who's in San Francisco, and say, hey, Charles, can you, um, can you look at this and see if this makes you feel a little bit off? And, and it's, it, it's not a good thing to do, but, but it's, 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 it's something that we're, we're doing with some of our animations. And again, it's, it's, it's a, there's a simple media query that you can use to go off and evaluate your preferences and to determine whether or not a user wants to have reduced motion or not. And, and uh, this is not something that we've built into our, our uh, default systems. It's something that we'd like to go off and address better in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 so that we can have a consistent user interface to allow users to disable CSS uh, or disable the, the animation so that they're able to, to act on that more, more effectively. Um, sorry about getting people to, to want ice cream this early in the morning, too. <laughs> so, yeah, conflicting guidelines. Um, I mentioned earlier about, about uh, um, issues with, with um, uh, low vision, um, but there's, there's, there's other, other issues where we, we can't find a single, a single solution or a single, um, a single pattern that will work for everyone. So, so when we're addressing um, accessibility issues for our clients, we try to go off and, and find out more information about, well, who are their clients? So we, we launched the, the CNIB's website. And um, so you know, obviously we wanted to make sure that it worked, all, that site worked very well for, for screen readers like JAWS and NVDA. And we did that. We overlooked the, the, uh, the fact that they also support a, lo a lot of low vision users that need to use Zoom text as, as part of, of their process. In our, in our testing tools, we didn't test it beyond what the WK requirements are. But a lot of their users would actually want to have more than two times of the two, two times um, expansion or, or, or doubling the, the, the size of the site because their vision is, is that bad that they need to go up and have it you know, maybe as, as much as, as, as ten times you know, enhanced over what, what the default comes with, with the website. Um, so knowing your users is really quite important. Um, here's an example of dyslexia. Does anyone have trouble reading that? That's how, uh, how a lot of people with dyslexia go off and, and, and or any, a representation of how people with dyslexia try and end um, and see, see printed material. And um, it's really hard to go off and to read that. So it says, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are, the only important thing is that the first and last letter be in the right place. But it still is a nuisance to go off and to see that. 
Um, this is a, an example with low vision, um, and uh, in this case, there's, I've used a, um, a Chrome plugin that evaluates, that, that simulates some of what it would look like to to to, to visit a uh, a Drupal uh, Drupal website or yeah, to, 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 Drupal, to visit to visit the Drupal North website. Um, if you have uh, particularly low vision in the center of your, your visual field and, and have some, some distortion outside of that. So you can see how it would be important to be able to zoom up more, more than you can with, with uh, or more than what, what's allowed for, for, for with the, uh, the default Drupal North site. Um, so this is a picture of Joe Biden. He's not the guy that invented the internet. That's uh, apparently Gore. Um, but uh, the... the yeah, not everyone scans well, and, and as, as we get older, um, there are things that, that are harder to do, and as, as, as young people, we scan through websites, and it's easy to sort of pick up what are the pieces that are relevant to us, and be able to, to jump between those, and be able to, to provide a, you know, have us get an, an, a sense of, of where, where's the information that matters to us. As we grow older, that's much harder. Um, not all widgets are created equally well. So, so again, looking, doing some work with the CNIB, I started to look at, at, uh, at some of the, the, uh, the widgets that are out there to allow for personalizations of, of the web. And there are ones like this that, that allowed you to, to sort of say, you know, here's the different letter sizes. Again, you've got plus and minus with the letter sizes and options between English and French. And you've got, uh, again, it's, it's popular to go up and have, have the, the different letters of A sizes. So you can sort of see that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's you know, some basic information. There's tools like this AT bar, which I think this is a proprietary tool that you can plug in that, that has some customization in that that you can add into your, your site. And uh, there's other ones, again, other, other widgets that you can, you can um, add in and, 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 and include as, as part of, of your site. Um, this is a, a Drupal site, for, I think, from AbilityNet that, uh, is it the, the, style, it's the style module? Um, Anyways, this one just allows you to change the, color, the background color and to choose between how you want that to be structured. Um, this is from the BBC MyWay site. Um, there's also this one from WordPress that just sort of says you want it to be, um, you know, a, a, a dark mode or, or light mode, and to sort of change the, the have, have one or two options of the size of the the text. Um, this one here allowed you to go off and actually use a, a scroll bar to go off and increase the size of the text, you know, one way or the other. But they also had a, a neat uh, um, text-to-speech option. So if you didn't have a, a screen reader and you wanted to be able to, to have the screen read to you or the text read to you, you could just use this tool to do this. And people often think that the only people who use screen readers and assistive technology are, are blind users um, or, or low vision users, but that's actually incorrect. I think a lot of the people that use these tools are people who maybe, maybe English isn't their first language, right? Maybe they're, they're uh, maybe they just, they, 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 they can't read. There's, there's still people who, do, who cannot read in, in our society. And you know, being able to go off and, and give them the ability to quickly read information that's on your website is a really useful thing. Um, again, text-to-speech is, is not that complicated technology. It's, it's far less complicated than speech-to-text, and we're doing speech-to-text right now. Um, this is the Estonian website. Um, I could talk a long time about Estonia and some of the neat stuff that they're doing. But again, they have the option of, of changing the font size, but also changing, changing the spacing. This is another thing that's, that's really useful for, for dyslexic users, is how do you try and, and, and increase the, the space between the, the, the text so that, that everyone can go off and, and um, see the, the, the spacing appropriately and, and make sure that, that the, the more space there is between the lines, the easier it is for somebody with dyslexia, dyslexia to go off and read. Um, well, we came across this this other widget um, that that was was the, the uh, uh, from the, the Inclusive Design Research Center, and this is an open source widget that was developed here in Canada um, by by the the, the, the team um, that's that's done some really groundbreaking work on, on accessibility out of out of OCAD. Um, and there, uh, you, has anyone here been to the uh, the accessibility uh, Alley Camp Toronto, the uh, Accessibility Conference in Toronto? Like it's, it's hosted by the folks who manage that. that you know, that's, that's where the IDRC is. And uh, it's a really great, great conference if people are looking for things to do next summer. Um, but uh, the, the, um, so this allows you to do a lot of customizations right there. It's a simple widget that, that is set up that, that allows you to go off and, yes, you can change the font size, you know, absolutely. But you can also change the fonts. 
Um, and again, why would you want to go off and give somebody the option to change the web, your website to Comic Sans? Comic Sans is, how many, how many people here love Comic Sans? Okay, two people. How many people here hate Comic Sans? <laughs> More people, and you know, and it's, it's you know, you tell a designer that you're going to go off and, and uh, have an option to turn their, their 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 beautiful theme into, you know, something that, that supports Comic Sans. They're going to be like, you know, pissed with you because this is this is like something that was popular in the '90s. It was like, you know, what kind of amateur hour is this? But but there are people who will be able to absorb information more effectively with Comic Sans than they are with any other font. Um, again, the dyslexic users are, are one of those, those states where, where a lot of people who are dyslexic would prefer Comic Sans. Um, and there are other tools, like uh, there's a font called Open Dyslexic, which is an open source uh, font that allows you to go off and, and that has, ha has some other characteristics that might be easier for, for some dyslexic users to read. But, but there are people who still prefer Comic Sans, and maybe that's just because they love the 90s. Um, but it could also be that they, they're, they're dyslexic or that they're, 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 you're, you're allowing for a certain amount of neurodiversity for those people, for whatever reason, love this abhorrent font. Sorry. Um, yeah. the, you've also got the option to, to manage the line spacing. Um, there's some other wonderful stuff that we've, we've um, I think I can just um, shrink this down and show you some. Um, if I go to the CNIB's website, I can look at this, and, and again, you can see, click on the Show Preferences button. You can modify this so that, that you want it in a dark mode. If you want it with orange text, if you want it with a light contrast, you can do that as well. Um, you can also create a table of contents. Um, so again, how do you navigate the website? So this, this widget will go off and, and take your your structured content, and it'll break it down and say, well, what we, we understand the structure of your content. We understand that because you've, you've got semantic HTML in it, and we'll expose that to the user. Because um, right now, most websites, the only people who use that structured content are bots and screen readers. So it's not useful for most users. Most users don't actually inherit the, the advantages of, of having that semantic structured content. But if you create the website, and you've got you've got that set up. You can you can give people the option to go off and to expose that information, and show them what what it, it um, what it, you know what, what is the the content behind that. So you can navigate within that to be able to to click to certain items and to to, to navigate down through the website. Again, it's it's making the information exposing the information to users and making it easier for them to go off and access it. Um, there's also an option to enhance the inputs. So let's make sure that you've got you know. The links are properly underlined and bold and enhanced. And make sure you've, you've done as much as you can to make sure your form elements are, are highlighted properly so that, that you don't have to, um, yeah, th th there's extra enhancements so that people are, who are, are navigating your website um, are able to go off and, and access, access it in the way that they, they need to go off and access the information. And then if you completely screw it up, you can go off and, and reset it. There, there's also a, a text-to-speech plugin that's that's uh, part of this, and, and we haven't included it in, in this demo, but it's certainly something that that is is uh, is worthwhile to go off and to, to, to look at as well. Um, so now back to the oops, wrong window. Now I just need to find the right window, and that how hard could that be? How hard could it be to find the right window? Sorry about this. So while I'm trying to find the right window. Um, any any questions? So many emails. What the? <laughs> um, let me just go back there. Let me just go to present again. That's what I needed to do. Sorry about that. Um, I'll jump back to the captions. So we have captions enabled, and. So I've got some links here that can be useful for people to think about how um, how to, to to get more information. The BBC My Way is, is certainly a website that's that's worthwhile looking at. Um, I have the links for the the Fluid UI uh, implementation um, and, and the preferences framework. So again, that's that's a useful reference to, for people to access. Um, Open Concept has also uh, upgraded the the, uh, the Fluid UI module so that there's a Drupal 8 uh, module for this as well as a 
Uh, it's using the latest version of the, of the, the, the Fluid UI uh, framework. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's so often times where, where you know, there's updates to these JavaScript libraries and trying to maintain them and keep up with them is, does take a bunch of time and effort to try and, and, and organize that. And again, you can see the, the website on the CNIB site and see that there. Um, some, some, some things to think about when you, when you are looking to, to help users personalize your site um, or to, to give people that sort of option. Um, it's important that you don't go off and, and hard code the value, the CSS values into your, uh, into your style sheets and, and certainly don't go off and, and uh, do inline styles because uh, that is very difficult to, to override. Um, but, uh, and actually I should mention that, that uh, there are a lot of, there, there's, there are some people that go off and, and do create custom style sheets for, uh, for sites and set up their browser to go off and load a custom style sheet that, that allows them to specify whatever font and color contrast that they want. Um, it doesn't always work particularly well. Um, again, having, having the flexibility with the, the Fluid UI module, you're able to go off and, and, and identify and test certain parameters um, and make sure that those parameters work and that your site looks, looks good. Because if you give users the, the option to go off and, and to, to set whatever CSS overrides they want to, you have no control over how that looks to them. So providing a, a UI with, with a wide range of options gives you the, op the ability to go off and to test and, and validate that, that you're, not, you're not keeping people to a, um, uh, a, a set of, of um, um, you're not keeping people to, to, a, a, list, uh, to a limited list of, 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 of options that, that, uh, that, that may, may limit their ability to interact with your site. Um, the other thing is, is uh, with CS, uh, CVS images, um, we, we definitely are, are big fans of, of scalar vector graphics. And uh, I think that there's, there's a, a huge opportunity here, uh, particularly to go off and provide, provide multiple, uh, multiple images uh, and using CSS to go off and to create that kind of contrast as appropriate for the appropriate background. But you need to make sure that you've designed your, your, your site properly and make sure that you've, you've incorporated the, the, um, you know, the appropriate backgrounds for all of your CSS when you're, when you're implementing that. Because that's, if, you, if you haven't, set, haven't gone through all of your iterations for, your, your, uh, for, for color contrast, for the, 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 the foreground and background colors, you're going to, you're going to, to, to block out content that, that uh, people might want to, be, might need to, to be interact with your website. Um, and uh, speaking of CS, CDS images, I'm, uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt now, an Alley Cats t-shirt that uh, Carrie Fisher is one of the, the people behind that. Um, and it's a fundraiser for, for uh, various accessibility events and, 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 and issues. Um, but Carrie's also done a really good um, article on uh, SVG images and how to go off and make SVG images accessible. And they're, they're quite an, an interesting, um, relatively new type, well not that new, but, but they're, they're not, still not as common as I like them to be in terms of, of, of uh, making sure that you've got a, a very performant website that has a lot of semantic information built into that. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that's all I've got right now as far as the formal presentation. Um, and uh, has, has anyone used the Fluid UI module before or heard of it? No? Any other widgets that people have used that they like? Laura, do you have any widgets, favorites? <laughs> um, I don't know if I have any widget favorites. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you a question, Mike. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, I, yeah, I was just wondering, like, you know, if in the future, if you potentially see a time when people could, like, save their preferences to their browser and that, you know, we could just go and grab preferences, like, right. from, their, from their browser. Kind well, you can't all read from dark mode, right? Right. So that's, that's already there for dark mode. It's just not there for everything. But, but sorry, okay. But, and there's, there's also efforts to, uh, like, there's a raise the full floor initiative of, um, G triple I, I think. Um, they, they're trying to go out and set up a, a standard sort of place to store and organize those preferences so that, that you can you can you know save your information not in a browser but in a central website, and that that when you load the site, it queries a central uh, central server to go out and say you know just, just like the um, uh, there's a, there's one for icons for image icons, Grab GrabApps or something. It's a WordPress tool that allows you to have a a consistent user icon across all kinds of different social media platforms. It, it's a, it's a same, they're hoping to do the same kind of thing. I haven't seen a lot of progress in that, but, but it's, uh, it's definitely something that, that I think we need to get towards, because as people are, are expecting to have more of a personal 
experience and are, are expecting to be able to say, well, I've, I've got my computer set so that, that, that dark mode is enabled and that, that I don't want to have any, uh, any animations and, and I've, I've defined that very clearly. Why doesn't your website respect my needs? Um, and why, why, do I, why do I struggle with this? So, yeah. How well supported are some of those new media queries uh, by the major browsers? The, I think that, that, that um, the, 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 the prefers reduced motion is, is reasonably well supported. Um, I think the preferred, prefers dark mode is not as well supported. I haven't looked at them recently on Can I Use, um, which is generally where I go to to find out if any of what is supported by what browsers. Um, but but it's it's it is a matter of time, right? It's 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 uh, you know, and they might you know, as, as often there is there there may be very various different options that people, um, yeah, various different iterations. Whether Firefox wants to do it this way and Chrome wants to do it that way, and you know, who the heck uses Safari anyways? But um, it's it's a uh, any Safari users that are pissed off here? Okay, one Safari user. Okay. But on the flip side, or on the on the complementary side, how well known are these preferences by end users? Like these are these are pretty new innovative capabilities. Right. But I'm wondering, like, do people even know they're out there that and can help them? Um, well, I mean, everyone reads Dries blog, right? So, so there, you know. It's, <laughs> no, I, I agree that it's a, education is a huge part of the problem, and and making sure that people um, that, that this information is discoverable and meaningful is a whole other challenge. And and how do you how do you communicate to users that there that there's there's a preference that they can set up that is is that that that's with their 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 own you know, browser or with their 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 laptop that that will carry over to not just one website but to multiple websites and, and even like there's 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 stuff that 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 people aren't already aware of like like language preferences you can sniff that information from the browser and and the, the number of times that I've gone to government websites and say you can skip this stupid English French page because it's a waste of time the browser knows what the preference is of that user. And it will spit them up to you know just display the homepage in whatever language the browser says, and and then after that, then you can you know if you if it's wrong if the user is, is browsing um, on somebody else's browser and it's in French and they want to go up and see it in English, well there's a prominent button on the right hand side that allows you to go to English. Like it's it's a it's a solvable problem, and still the bureaucracy is is, is you know wants to have a landing page. With a boring image, and they, they realize you know you've got five clicks, and one of them is on the stupid welcome page. <laughs> There's still that that mindset that that is, is out of date and needs to be 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 be, be brought home to people. But but it's um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Other, other than trying to go up and, and speak at conferences like this and to talk about uh, about this with our clients and and to to raise awareness about what is the technology that's embedded in the systems. And, and uh, to, to hopefully that the, the people learn that there are options, whether it's from widgets like, like the, uh, the Fluid UI module that can be um, included in the, the, uh, the, the, the presentation as, 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 as the website to give more information. Um, I have asked them to go off and to, to try and, and sniff the prefers dark mode um, in that so that you know, like the, the, this, this widget should allow you to, to automatically um, choose a dark, dark, a dark screen. If you've if if you've picked that in your browser, you shouldn't have to also select that in the widgets, right? Like that, that makes sense. But but the Fluid UI team hasn't brought that into their product yet. And again, it's an open source product. If if um, if I had the time, I would do that. But I don't have the time. So, yeah. For the WCAG specs, is that a Canadian specific thing? And if, no. And then. Who in Canada is required to use it? So, good question. So, WK 2.0 is is uh, is required is a is requirement. That's basically the biggest international standard, um, and uh, it's it, the World Wide Web Consortium is behind that. And the latest version is WK 2.1. If you're building sites for clients in, uh, in in Europe, you need to go off and build to WK 2.1. The standard in Canada is still WK 2.0. Um, and uh, although it depends on the industry and, and what you're building for, um, we were talking earlier about about the the uh, Accessible Canada Act. Uh, so the Accessible Canada Act is a, a really interesting set of legislation, which which um, is going to, to receive royal assent and become law um, in the the next. Um, when is it going to become law? Um, later on this month, it will become law. 
and that will affect all federal government institutions as well as all federally regulated institutions. So if you have clients that are banks, if you have clients that are in the transportation sector, then this matters to you because you know those are federally regulated industries. So is telecommunications. So you know if you know try to go off and say how, that, that so the standard that, that those industries are going to be, be held to, and, and there's going to be some enforcement mechanisms around this as well, is WK 2.0 AA. And that will probably get brought up to WK 2.1 um, very shortly. And WK 2.2 is on the way out, out, out the door right now. So we're going to have to think about how do you upgrade to the, the, the latest version of the, the, the web content accessibility guidelines. Yep. Uh, to implement the uh, text-to-speech functionality on the uh, Drupal website or any website? Is it that simple as just uh, adding a library, or do you have to prepare or modify the site's content to, to be read? There, there are. Um, I haven't actually played with this, so, so, it's, uh, so I'm going to go based on what I, I have I've seen and looked at. Um, the the, uh, the Fluid UI um, extension for, for text-to-speech, um, it does look like you can just go off and, and add in um, a module to that that will then go off and, and, and do the text-to-speech interpretation without any interpretation. And it, it, it follows the focus of the, the uh, whatever, whatever your, the focus of your, your mouse is. So it would read the, the paragraph module or, or, or navigate through that. I don't think there's very much you have to do with that. If your, your site is already set up to be fairly semantic, the text-to-speech tool should, should allow you to do that. There are a bunch of other widgets that, that do allow text-to-speech, and there's also, uh, with every every operating system out there, there's a, uh, a reasonably good uh, um, screen reader that's built into those as well. So whether that's voiceover on the Mac, uh, or whether that's, that's uh, NVDA in Windows, and, and uh, if you've got the money and, and you want to pay for it, really powerful tool, and there's, there's JAWS as well from Freedom Scientific. Other questions? Anyone want to go off and install the Fluid UI module on any of your sites? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, sorry, Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering how you're doing the captioning, is that? So, so this is actually built into to, uh, to Google uh, Google Slides with the Chrome. If you look at, uh, if you start any um, any you know Google Slide right now in Chrome, if you go down to the presentation layer, you can see that there's there's a um, an, an option for ca for adding captions, and it's it's I don't know how accurate it has been because uh, I obviously haven't been reading it, and hopefully you guys haven't been too distracted by by the auto captioning. It's like oh they really screwed up that one. You know? <laughs> But, but it's, it's, it's useful for, for so many ways to, to actually uh, help with people who are hearing impaired and make sure you're able to um, have at least some, some support for people who are, are either are, are hard of hearing or, or just distracted and want to be able to sort of zip back to say what was said. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, Kevin, Kevin here was um, he's responsible for, the, um, for setting up the audio visuals, is also working on a, on a tool to try and and uh, to provide, uh, using similar Google uh, speech to text tools to have a, a different presentation that allows captioning to happen on a separate screen um, that also feeds into the, the, the captioning of the video. You know, ideally, you'd be able to um, have this talk, have a, uh, a text file that you could then edit that has the appropriate timestamps in it that would allow, allow a human editor to sort of scroll through it and, and realize the places where I said Drupal, but it said Elaine or something like that. Not Drupal there. Um, and and uh, you, you'd be able to go and edit that file and then upload it to YouTube, and you would have a fully captioned and corrected version of, of what was said at the, at the meeting or at, at the event. So you know, that, that's definitely a better, a better direction. Again, if you, if you have that, that captioning is not only useful for, for people who are hard of hearing, um, but it's also you know, so many people watch videos in the washroom, on the bus, you know, while they're while they're they're watching a, a, a terrible sitcom with their their uh, you know their better half, and and uh, if you can go off and and, and use you have captioning built into your video, you're going to get a bit a broader audience of of, uh, of, of viewers because you know. It, not many people have time to sit down and to watch and listen to 
and focusing on a video where if you can scroll down and, and, and read a transcript and say, okay, at, at uh, 30 minutes in, there is, there's a really interesting part. I want to actually listen to that part of it. And I want to copy this text to go off and use this in a tweet I want to use. Like, there's so many ways to actually use this, this uh, a captioning system to, to be able to, to have more powerful impact. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, then, then that's it. Thank you all very much.